most masculine fragrances in your collection. Guys, I know this is a rather controversial topic. You know that I don't like the idea of uh, fragrances having to be marketed towards men or women. I think you should wear whatever you feel like wearing, whatever fits your personal preference. That being said, I do think that some fragrances in my collection feel rather masculine or feminine depending on the composition and how they uh, react with my skin chemistry. So with that idea in mind, I asked around YouTube fragrance uh, reviewers on the, in the community and I was really pleased that some of them wanted to participate for this video. Uh, a lot of these guys I've, I've been looking up to since the beginning, since I started my uh, YouTube adventure in 2014. I started getting into fragrances back in 2011 and I watched a lot of your videos. So it means a lot to me that you wanted to be a part of this video. Without further ado, I'm going to give the word to the first fellow reviewer and I'll see you guys back at the end of this video for my uh, own personal picks. See you soon. Hey guys, uh, Steven, thank you so much for letting me be part of this collaboration. I meant, meant so much that you included me on this. I, I look up to a lot of you reviewers and, and you are just seriously one of the uh, the big, big time, big time guys in our community. So thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. This one is, of course, our masculine fragrances. So hard to come up with, um, you know, for niche masculine because so many niche, you know, there's a lot of women in our community that wear a lot of the niche fragrances that are kind of geared toward men. And of course, we wear a lot of fragrances that are geared toward women. So it's kind of tough on the niche. I really didn't pick any. Uh, but the two that I kind of think about uh, when I think about a hairy chest masculine fragrance, I think about Stetson. That one, all of our fathers and uncles wore, I'm sure, back in the day, back in the 80s. This is my vintage bottle of Stetson, still as masculine as ever. And then the other one I really think about, uh, of course, I had a sixth grade nightmare with this one, but obviously we all think about masculine too when we see polo green. Uh, if I smelled this on a girl, I would run. So, but guys, polo green. But uh, all jokes aside, those are not my two picks, uh, but they're great. You know, the, you think of like hairy chested 1985 men running around and, you know, that's, that's kind of that masculinity, you know, going on. But the two that I picked, uh, like I said, niche were really, really hard. I just, I went through so many, you know, there's really no Lalabo or, uh, you know, Dior or Guerlain. I mean, there's just so many Rajas. I mean, there's just so many for even like Creed. I know Aventus is you know, there, there's a couple in there that are that are definitely towards men, but these are the two that I kind of picked. Of course, they're designers, but uh, this one, of course, um, Yves Saint Laurent, YSL, Reeve Gauch. Guys, this one is just a barbershop, you know, scent. It's, you know, women go to salons and, uh, and, and we go to, you know, barbershops, you know, and that's what I really, really think about. I just think a dude really would, you know, just a guy smells like a barbershop. This is so clean. It's it's just, oh my gosh, there's, um, you know, there's so many, there, there's some nice spices in here, but, but it's very clean. It's got that lavender note, like a lot of the barbershop fragrances do, but just a very, very great, I just think of masculinity with this because I just, I see a man wearing this because I just do not smell, I do not want to smell a woman smelling like, like shaving cream and, and clean, like a clean man, you know, so that's one. And then of course, one of my favorites, it's a little bit old school, but still on that modern kick. So you can wear this and people really do like it. Uh, but it's just really not talked about in the community. You know, it's more of like the Blue de Chanel now, a lot of the, the those kind of fragrances that are going around. But guys, this one is awesome. This is one of my vintage bottles of the Cologne Concentré Egoist. Um, oh my gosh, there's spices. It's woody. It's leathery. It just it has some cinnamon in there. But guys, this is just it's just a man fragrance. You know, I do I don't I don't really want to smell this on a woman. There's you know, 99% of my fragrances probably I wouldn't mind smelling on a woman, but. These, these are just manly fragrances. You think about masculine when I think of Egoist and, um, and, and the Reeve Gauche. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed my picks. Let's go on to the next reviewer. But again, I can't thank you guys enough for letting me even be a part of uh, this, this great collaboration with a lot of the big names in our community. So thank you guys. Thank you, Steven. On to the next. South of France, I have here Ecume de Cachon. It's like a super fresh fragrance from the south of France. It has lemon, it has cinnamon, it has a lot of fruits. It's super salty and watery, aquatic. And I found it here. The Lacana Pro Surf Contest is going on. All the surfers wearing this, and you will love it. You've got to try it. Ecume de Cachon. 10 minutes remaining. 
This is a fragrance you all got to try. It's the super, super Terre de Hermes, super masculine fragrance. It's one of the only ones you've got to have. I mean, every man needs to have Terre de Hermes and this is the one. Get it. Hey guys, my third absolutely masculine fragrance for men is this Abbey Rouge. It's like the ultimate male fragrance, super masculine. It is uh, leathery, it is the color of the red leather jacket that people used to wear when they were going horseback riding in France. I'm here in France, I'm with the horses, I'm spraying a little bit, and then I get a horse and I get a ride. I'll see you later guys, bye bye. Hello guys, Cody here, here to present you guys with three of the fragrances that I consider the most masculine within my collection. Uh, when this topic was brought to me, I instantly thought, you know, I've got three fragrances that instantly jump out and really come across as masculine in my collection and just have that feel to it. Uh, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. Now the first fragrance is from the house of Tom Ford. Tom Ford overall is a great house that you're going to find many fragrances that fit the bill as really masculine fragrances, but this one sticks out. It's Tuscan Leather. Tuscan Leather has this really animalistic, uh, sexual kind of just really rough, tough, you know, right out there kind of vibe that really gives off a nice masculine impression. This is one that I really like to wear with, you know, uh, jeans, a buttoned up dress up, nice shirt, uh, things of that nature. You know, I've got my watch on, I've got, uh, you know, I'm dressed to the nines basically in this one, but I'm not in a full on suit. Uh, I like the vibe that really this gives off and it just, you know, comes off with just oozing masculinity, if you will. So that's the first one on my list, Tuscan Leather. Now the second fragrance on my list uh, is from, I consider its opposite house. This one's from Creed. This one is Royal Oud. Now early on I mentioned that uh, Tuscan Leather was a fragrance that I like to wear in casual scenarios where I'm not fully dressed up. Well, this is different. Royal Oud is one where that I wear uh, when I am deciding to dress up in a nice suit. In fact, I wear this one a lot to weddings. I wear this one a lot when I've got, you know, something that uh, requires me to wear a suit and still, uh, you know, I guess come off masculine, if you will. It's just got a very commanding presence that comes along with it, which is really kind of weird for Creed fragrances. You know, Creed fragrances are really known to be light, airy fragrances, and this one kind of fits the bill too, but it has this dark masculine quality. It's probably one of the darkest Creeds that are out there, uh, but either way, it just has that masculine quality. It's got Royal Oud. Now the third and final fragrance that I'm gonna go ahead and mention is from the house of Frédéric Mall. The fragrance is Musk Ravageur uh, by Maurice Roussel. Now, ah oh man, this one is just masculinity all over. It doesn't matter where you're wearing this, casual, dress up, you name it, this one is masculine through and through. There are some people who are not gonna like the fragrance. Well, you know, to me it's just like tough. I like this fragrance. You know, I feel like I've got balls the size of, you know, grapefruits basically. It's just masculine overall. And, you know, I can't really say much else about this fragrance. It's heavy clove, heavy spices. It's just oof, oozing with masculinity. So if you're looking for a masculine fragrance, definitely check out Musclava Jour from Frederick Mall. Anyways, that was, those are my three fragrances that I'm going to go ahead and mention here. Uh, again, thanks for having me on this collaboration. Really happy to be part of it. I'm going to pass it off to the next person. Hey, what's happening, guys? It's Max Forth here with a three most masculine scent collab. Thank you so much, Stephen, for putting this together and for inviting me to be a part of this collaboration. So when I think about most masculine scents in my collection, three things comes to mind. Elegance, sophistication, and also a little bit of boldness, but also I want the scent to be unapologetic strapping. So guys, my first pick goes to 1978 Azaro Pour Homme. This is a vintage edition. To me, this is the epitome of a great, classy, aromatic, barbershop feel fougere type scent. Of course, the most prominent notes here are going to be the anise, the lavender, and the beautiful oak moss bedding that you get at the bottom, which makes this scent a powerhouse green scent, which is a trendsetter of its kind. You know, everybody looks up to this scent. If, you, if you're a true fragrance lover and you love fougeres, you must try this one to appreciate how great this fragrance was. Definitely try this one out. Azara Pour Homme is my first pick. My second pick goes to a 1994 creation from Dolce Gabbana. This is Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme. This is the original iteration of this fragrance. A fantastic citrus melange will 
greet you up top and it's going to make way to this honey vetiver and lavender smooth barbershop feel. It's a head turnover fragrance ahead of its time. If you guys managed to get the sticker version that was on between 94 and 2000, you guys will see how much of a head turner this fragrance is. Absolutely lovely vetiver, lavender with a honey tobacco kind of feel. Amazing, ahead of its time. And my second pick, Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme. So my third and final pick, being a huge Oak Moss fan, I just have to choose this one here. Unfortunately, this is discontinued. This is from the 2007 original private blend lineup. Of course, I'm talking about Moss Brash. Moss Brash to me is one of the best Oak Moss fragrances of all time. This here is Oak Moss. The fragrance is green, herbaceous, with a hint of honey, incense, and patchouli. This is opulent. It's resinous to me. It's on my top three favorite private blends of all time. If you have a chance to check this out, definitely seek it out because you're going to love it. If you're a fan of Oak Moss. This here is an Oak Moss bomb and one that I'm so happy to still have in my collection. So there you have it folks. Those are my three picks. Most masculine scents that I love in my collection that I wanted to share with you guys. Again, Stephen, thank you so much for having me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Steven and I have a YouTube channel called Red Lessons and first and foremost, I just want to thank you so much for having me be a part of this collaboration. It really means a lot to me. And so I'm going to be going over three fragrances that I have in my collection that whenever I smell them, it just reminds me of something utterly masculine, unapologetically masculine, something that a man's man would wear. And so the first one that I want to talk about is such a classic fragrance. It actually came out in the 70s. And this is a fragrance that my father-in-law, but also my grandfather, used to wear religiously. And this one is the original Polo by Ralph Lauren. And so this one has a lot of oak moss in it. It's verdant. It's unapologetic. I know a lot of the earlier formulations are the ones that really attribute the powerhouse longevity and projection of this one. And this bottle is completely empty, of course, because my grandfather wore it all. But I can still appreciate whatever is remaining of the smell in the cap and on the atomizer and there's just something about this one that every single time I wear it there is no question and no doubt in my mind that this is a fragrance that is suited for a man I would never have a single solitary thought that I could see a woman wearing this one or anything like that unapologetically masculine the next one that I would like to talk about is on the niche side of things. It is a recent acquisition of mine, and this one by the company Zoologist is called Tyrannosaurus Rex. This has a lot of leather, black pepper, incense, spices, fur, aromatics. Um, there's just so much going on in here, some dark resins underneath it all. This is a terrifying release. It's unapologetic, and it really bites into and rips apart some of the more delicate fragrances on the market. Tyrannosaurus Rex, another one that I really enjoy. And the last fragrance that I would like to talk about is one that I'm actually not that big of a fan of, but every single time that I smell it, there's no question that it was made for men. I don't personally see a woman wearing this one. As a matter of fact, there is a woman's counterpart on the market, which is a lot sweeter. This one is very dry, it's smoky, it's leathery, very much in the same vein as T-Rex by Zoologist, but kind of like a designer version of it. This one is called Gucci Guilty Absolute, and this one was composed by a Alberto Morias. Really different, really challenging. Some people say it kind of smells like um, a hospital or a band-aid. I've heard some really outlandish comparisons and I can see where they're coming from, but I really just get smoke, incense, and leather. Definitely masculine. Not my favorite, as I said before, but I definitely appreciate what it does. Thank you so much once again for having me be a part of this collaboration and I look forward to seeing what everybody else has picked. Hi guys, it's Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Steven, thank you so much for letting me participate in this collaboration video. So this is three of my most masculine fragrances, but we're gonna go with the first brand. This is from the house of Javoy, and it's one of my favorite, favorite uh, niche houses. This is a fragrance that once I shared with a friend, uh, and she said, wow, this is an ultra-masculine men's, uh, kind of like a cigar bar kind of a fragrance, so you smell really, really uh, heavy, smoky, woody uh, and boozy notes in it. The fragrance, uh, I'm not sure if it contains boozy notes, but I can kind of see what she was referring to. And it is a very, very, very masculine vetiver fragrance. To me, this is 
private label from Jovoy. And what I find uh, very masculine about it is like as soon as you smell it, it's like this like intensity. Yes. The way I would describe it is there's just no feminine touch to this fragrance. Absolutely not at all. You've got lots of woody notes and of course that dark, very dark, inky, strong, slightly boozy I guess, vetiver in here. As soon as you smell it, you can smell how masculine this fragrance is. It is a great, great vetiver. If you like vetiver fragrances, this is definitely one for you to try, especially if you're into the ultra-masculine vetiver. So, so check it out. This is Private Label. The next one, we're going to a leather fragrance, and this is a house from the UK, and this is from the house of Papillon Perfumery, and this is Anubis. So why do I find this to be very masculine? It's very masculine because the leather in here is so strong, so musky, slightly animalic, but very, very rough and burned leather. And something about it just does it for me. And I love leather fragrances, but you've gotta love that muskiness and you've gotta love the, the, the slight animalic touches. To me, they're not so strong, and some people say it is stronger on them, but definitely a musky, very, very rough, like a burned, uh, charred leather is what I get from this. Very unique, and uh, the name Anubis is totally fitting, something about Egypt, but Definitely worth checking out, and if you like your leather fragrances to be really, really masculine, this is one to try. So this is Anubis from Papillon Perfumery. And last but not least, we are going to the house of Le Galion, and this is special for gentlemen. What I find to be masculine in, in this fragrance is because it is, after all, fougere. There are fougere notes here, and when you smell it, it, it just totally takes me back to the masculine fragrances of yesteryear, especially when I was first starting to smell my dad's colognes. Um, very, very masculine kind of barbershop -y, fougere style colognes. This is all of that, very classic. Nothing about it is modern, but they do have a, a pop and ax in the notes and it does give it a little bit of a more oriental, softer touch to it. But other than that, the whole entire fragrance is very, very masculine. I find it to be one of the more masculine fragrances from um, this house. So if you like fougeres and you haven't tried special for gentlemen, definitely do try it, especially if you like masculine fragrances. So that's it. Those are my three fragrances. Thank you so much for watching. So guys, how awesome were these picks? And I have to say, I agree on a lot of these uh, choices. For instance, Azzaro Purom, the original fragrance. My grandfather used to wear that one. So I'm always thinking about like his role model as a grandfather, uh, being a little child, smelling it on him. I think it feels rather masculine, the fragrance. However, there are some other fragrances like Tuscan Leather who almost deserve this, you know, title even more because of the rough leather note and the dry down. Um, but of course, I'm not going to pick those fragrances for my own list. Um, I'm going to show you something else that I have. Of course, a lot of you know that I am a big advocate for uh, Kuros. This fragrance back in the day was totally some sort of uh, alpha male fragrance. Again, um, if you're a woman and you like to smell this, <laughs> why not? But to me, this feels extremely masculine. This is like a very fecal, um, civet-based fragrance with oak moss. And it has a lot of uh, aromatics that, you know, give it some soapiness to the composition it feels really complex and it hits you on all angles drying down on my skin this is an extremely pleasant experience um i know a lot of people can't get over that opening but especially with the vintage formulation you know you get so much depth and so much richness this is one of the most masculine fragrances that i have ever smelled in my life so my first pick kuros by yves saint laurent so my next uh, pick for this uh, most masculine fragrances is Interlude Man by Amouage. Um, I know there's a, a female version as well, and that's uh, it's not one that I have personally smelled. But this one is like an extremely intense, um, a dry amber with some resins and a big dose of incense. It has even a, a green element to it. It's something that, you know, really pierces your nostrils, especially if you wear too much. Uh, I can remember a, an experience back in the day that uh, Steven did on his channel when he wore like more than 30 sprays, I believe, of Interlude Man. And I think a lot of people noticed him on the street, in the subway and so on. 
So this fragrance, even if you don't wear uh, too much, is extremely uh, powerful and feels extremely masculine in my opinion. So that's my second fragrance that I'm picking uh, for this list. And then I have to reach out on the top here. This is also no surprise, of course, uh, leather oud in the same genre as both of them, but a little bit more towards kuros, except this doesn't have any soapiness to it. It is a little bit more towards uh, the fresh side. Yes, believe it or not, I believe this has some, some sort of almost vetiver, citrusy kind of quality to it. But it's very uh, fecal also and uh, very, you know, sharp, especially in the opening, that oud, that civet, and then in the dry down, the beeswax. This is also an amazing fragrance. Uh, I like to wear this one, but it feels really, really masculine. Um, so guys, I hope you enjoyed these picks. I hope you enjoyed the other fragrances. I think they are also uh, really good choices. Um, I will put links to their channels in the description. Guys, let me know your thoughts on this subject in the comments section. I hope we can get a conversation started and I will be glad to see you in the next review. Bye-bye.